this video will provide some instructions for you on how to use the PHET simulation on gas properties and how to complete an activity which you need to complete in unit 1 in section 3 to be able to proceed to the summative assessment on section 3. So when you open PHET simulations, go to physics and then select heat and thermo and then open gas properties. I'm sorry if in this video I'll be coughing or if my voice sound weird. It is almost 5 a.m. now and I have been pulling an overnighter so I'm quite tired and I ask you to be patient with me as I uh, explain uh, the things about this, this simulation. So for some reason when I click on run now it doesn't work on my computer right now but when I go download and then open the simulation then opens on my computer. So this is what you will see when you open the simulation on gas properties. And you can see that there is a pump in here through which you can pump in molecules of gas. There is a pressure gauge which measures pressures in units atmospheres. There is a thermometer and a heater or a device to provide ice. This device right here can provide ice for cooling or flame for heating. Um, so let's go and for example let's enter in 100 light molecules so here on the right where it says light species I'm going to put in 100 <coughs> and I insert 100 molecules or atoms of, of gas this could be gas like hydrogen which is pretty light actually the lightest gas that there is so what you can see in here is the temperature has risen to a certain value it wasn't at 301 kelvins before, if I remember correctly. <coughs> and you can also see that the pressure gauge is now uh, not reading zero atmospheres as it was before. Now let's talk about the pressure. You remember from the definition of pressure that to, for something to feel pressure there has to be force acting over a certain area. In this case the area is of course the the inside of this container <coughs> so in the world where you and I live there will be some kind of a three-dimensional object here um, on the screen is a two-dimensional box and the area of course could be defined by the length times the width of this box the force that provides the pressure comes from the collisions of the molecules with the container and so in, in any of these collisions there's some force pushing on the container and if you combine all of the little forces from all of these molecules as they bump onto the sides of the container at any given moment that will give you the value of the force take that force in newtons divided by the area in meters squared and you will get the pressure in pascals <coughs> this pressure gauge doesn't measure the pressure in pascals it, pressures, it measures the pressure in units called atmospheres one atmosphere is a standard atmospheric pressure that you and I feel right now as we sit you know, in, in your room at a computer. So this is about half an atmosphere, which is about half the pressure which you and I feel right now. But as you can see, the value of the pressure that, that the pressure gauge shows changes all the time, which is actually really what, what happens. Because if the pressure is caused by the collisions of these molecules, the number of the molecules hitting the, the, the sides of the container is not the same at any given moment. It always changes. Now, on average, with very many molecules, it, it's pretty much constant all the time, but it's not exactly the same all the time. And so you, you might ask, well, what is the pressure inside of the container? Well, it changes all the time. It depends at any given time how many collisions there are. So you could say, well, how can I then tell what the pressure inside is? We cannot give it as an exact value at all times, but we can give it as an average value. So if you look at the pressure gauge right now, it fluctuates, it changes. We can give it, so we could say that the pressure inside is between this value and this value. And what are those two values? Well, the lower one would be the smallest value that the pressure gauge shows, and then the upper one would be 
the highest one that the pressure gauge shows <coughs> and if you observe the pressure gauge for a certain amount of time let's say for a minute you can pick out those two values the lowest value and the largest value and then you could say what the pressure then is on average so as I've been watching the pressure gauge uh, I saw that the smallest value or the smallest value that I saw it to go to was about 0.46 atmospheres 0.46 atmospheres so I will write that down 0 0.46 atmospheres and the largest value to, the largest value that I saw it to go up to was 0.54 atmosphere 0 0.54 atmospheres now you might have seen it go lower than what I saw it or go slightly higher than what I saw it but I will use these two values the 0.46 and 0.54 atmosphere <coughs> to demonstrate how I would then describe what the pressure is inside so I have these two values now now you might follow this with me uh, you might write this down on a paper so I take those two values 0.46 and 0.54 atmosphere and now I'm going to find the average of those two values and how do you find the average of two, two such values well you <coughs> add them together so I'll go 0.46 plus 0.54 and it gives me the value of well this in this case it comes out exactly to 1.00 atmosphere of course and I have to divide it by 2 so I divide it by 2 <coughs> and I get 0 0.50 atmosphere so 0 0.50 atmosphere is the average value but I will also include the uncertainty the uncertainty then gives me kind of the boundary the lowest lowest and the up uh, the highest value to which the pressure goes and so I will then state that the pressure inside of the container right now is a 0 0.50 atmosphere plus or minus 0 0.04 atmosphere <coughs> again the pressure is 0 0.50 atmosphere plus or minus 0 0.04 atmosphere and the plus or minus just means that if you then subtract the 0 0.04 from the 0 0.5 you'll get the smallest value that I see uh, on the pressure gauge and if you add the 0.04 atmospheres to the 0.5 you'll get the largest <coughs> value the 0.54 atmospheres and you can now that you know how <coughs> to use the pressure gauge or how to measure the pressure you could use the simulation now to to show <coughs> to demonstrate all three of those uh, gas laws which you have learned about so the Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Gillesac's law. What I would like you to do is to demonstrate Boyle's law. Now, to demonstrate Boyle's law, the relationship between pressure and volume, you need to go to the right and click on the constant parameter and choose temperature. We want the temperature to be constant. There you go. Now we have we have selected a constant parameter to be temperature. The next thing that you need to do is to make the container as big as you can by dragging you can see that as I put my cursor over this handle in here I can then drag the handle all the way to the left so now the container is as big as possible okay what we'll need next is a measuring tool to help us to measure the volume now in this case <coughs> it's not really volume it's the area and really we, we want the area just now it's going to be an area two-dimensional area so I can place the volume the, the, the ruler here <coughs> the ruler measures the length in here in units called nanometers we're not concerned that much with the unit right now just with the value so if I place the ruler like so I can tell that the length of this box is about 9.2 nanometers 9.2 nanometers <coughs> and again I could find out what the pressure is just as we described before <coughs> now the Boyle's law states that the product of the volume and of the pressure will be always constant right P times V equals a constant so now what I could do I could take the area in here and I cannot measure the width um, but the width will stay constant so really 
what it comes down to is just that this length in here, the value of the length, times the value of the pressure, will be equal to a certain constant. So I could find out what the 9.2 is, multiplied by the value of the pressure, which now you know how to find, the average value, and it would give me a number. And Boyle's law tells us that if temperature stays constant, then this um, this product of, in this case, this length times the pressure should stay constant. <coughs> so I take those two values, I multiply them, and I, I find a, a value. And then what you could do is you could decrease the volume in here that will increase the pressure, and then use those two new values to see whether the product of the new volume and the new pressure comes out to be the same constant as before. So here is how I would do that. For example, I, I would select half of this length, which would be 4.6. So I'm going to move this ruler so that it says 4.6, like so. And now I would move this container, like so. And now I have exactly half the area as I had before. Okay, half the area and the pressure has increased. Now I could take this value of length and multiply it by my new value of pressure and compare the constant, the new constant, <coughs> to, the con to the number that I had before from the multiplying of the length times the pressure. And if Boyle's law really is a natural law, if it, if, if it you know, describes correctly what we see in nature, then the two values, the two products, should be the same. Now what I would like you to do in this activity is, uh, in your own words, you will submit an, um, sort of a description, an explanation of what creates the pressure inside here, inside of this container. What is responsible for the, for the reading uh, on this pressure gauge? How is the pressure created? And I already explained it uh, in this video, so you can just listen to it again and then put it in your own words. And the next thing I would like you to do is do what I just described, but I would like you to do it <coughs> with a certain specific value of the molecules of gas so that I could check your values. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to click on reset. <coughs> and okay. So I reset the whole thing. So now we have zero temperature, zero pressure, of course, because there are no molecules inside. And I would like you to insert in 235 light molecules. 235 light molecules. Press enter. <coughs> um, well, and with the, with the 235 light molecules, again, keeping the temperature the same, I want you to extend the container as much as it goes and I want you to find the value of the product of the length times the pressure and then I want you to well, find that value and then I would like you to decrease again to half now I don't have it exact in here but decrease it again to the half of the area find a new pressure multiply those two values together and then see if you get the same value as before. Submit your answers through the link which is provided in this 